Good morning, everyone. This morning we are on our last tutorial for the Vice for organization. We still have more for others, but this is the last for organization. And the one today is is pronounced antanagogy. Antanagogy. And let's get started there. So antanagogy is a way of ordering points so as to downplay the negative points. I know it's confusing, but it will get less confusing. Okay. So the way that you do that is by you place a negative point next to a much stronger positive one. And this helps to emphasize the positive one and de-emphasize the negative one. Um, and by placing them this way, you want to make sure that the positive point will far outweigh the negative point. Far outweigh, yes. Not far outweigh, but far outweigh. Yeah, I know you're being. I know. It's kind of like cigarette ads. They try and like over what the part where it gives you cancer and stuff. Yes, kind of like that. Um, yeah. And the the idea that the positive point outweighs the negative point should be apparent by the phrasing that you use for each one. So the words that you use to bring out the negative points and the positive points should indicate that the positive point is much stronger and actually um, the thing that you, the, the idea that you want to bring out based on the words that you use, so the diction that you have there. And uh, we'll pause for time to write. example for you. While cutting automobile pollution may cause car makers to lose money in the short run, the benefits of cleaner air and a decrease in deaths by respiratory diseases are definitely worth the risk to business. Yes? Do you recommend we write this down? I do recommend it, or if you want to go on, on school later and download the PowerPoint. You can do it there as well, because we're going to have an explanation, so I'm sort of going to explain to you how this works. Um, so if you write it down, you'll have a better, an easier time understanding how it works. So are we ready for the explanation now? No, we are not. <laughs> okay. Pause momentarily. Yes. We'll pause for station identification. Commercial? Did you have Sorry. Not commercial? <laughs> they, they, they used to say that on television a long time ago. They would tell you what station they were that you were watching. Yeah. Back when they didn't have a TV guide. Hmm. I did used to have a TV guide. Yeah. A piece of, there's a magazine that you opened up and had all the listings of shows. Heck yeah. It's, uh, I know, it's crazy these days. You used to get excited because, like, on Friday there'd be a movie. You could watch, you're like, yes, I can watch it on that. Yeah. 
the good old days. Yeah. All right, are we ready to move on to the explanation now? Yes. Awesome. So, first thing to take a look at. The writer juxtaposes the negative aspect of losing money with the positive aspect of cleaner air, hence the antanagogy. Okay? Um, and he's basically outweighing the negative loss of money with cleaner air and, possibly more importantly, a uh, less, excuse me, less death, right? Less death is probably always good. Okay. He also actually um, re-emphasizes the positive as being better than the negative by using the phrase, definitely worth the risk in the second part of your sentence there, which emphasizes both points again and makes the latter sound like the stronger point rather than the former. Meaning the second idea, cleaner air, fewer deaths, fewer deaths, yeah. not less deaths, fewer deaths. Um, less death, but le fewer deaths. Get that right. Um, good. And that is how you typically want to use antanagogy is to make sure that the positive aspect of whatever you're bringing out is emphasized more than the negative aspect. Are you ready? examples. She can be quick to anger, but when you're in need, she'll always be there. Okay? So yeah, it, it might not be a good thing that somebody is easily angered, but the fact that she's always there when you need her outweighs the fact that she gets angrily, gets angry easily. So you can see there, by putting these two next to each other, you can actually help to highlight or emphasize the part that you want uh, to bring out, right? Because if you started your paragraph with, like, she may be quick to anger, and then you ended your paragraph with, uh, when you're in need, she'll always be there, whatever you had in the middle wouldn't be as beneficial for you as putting the two together right next to each other because it immediately shows the reader where your idea is going. Next example. The car might cost a bit more than other models when it's new, but it more than pays for itself by not breaking down nearly so often as cheaper ones. Kind of, yes. And, uh... <laughs> yeah. Buy this one because it will break down less than this one. Yeah. Um, we're going to get into a little bit more of the subtleties of it uh, in the next couple of slides. Yes, it, it can be used for persuasion. Um, and it, it can actually help bolster your credibility as a writer. Um, if you point out the weak, the weaknesses in your argument, 
and then address them and say why, yes, you understand that these are weak, but the strengths of the, of the opposite side far outweigh the weaknesses of the, of the, uh, that, of the original side, however you want to say that. Are you ready to move on? Yeah. Okay. I understand that probably it's a much more interesting than this, but okay. Uh, okay. Are we ready now? How about now? Okay, good. Some uses. Uh, one way you can do it is to point out flaws in your argument and then address them immediately. This is what I talked about just before. Okay, By anticipating that a reader might say, well, why didn't the author think of this reason? Okay, Doesn't the author know that, that this point is not very strong or that, that he doesn't address this aspect of the opposite side of his argument? Well, by actually addressing the opposite side of your argument and saying where your argument might be weak, and then explaining why the positive aspects rather than the negative aspects of that argument are better can actually increase your credibility as a writer. Okay. So, your credibility will increase when you recognize the flaws and weaknesses. I've said this for the third time now. Hopefully it'll stick. Um, in your argument, then you analyze and explain why those weaknesses are not actually stronger than the positive points of your argument, and why the positive points of your argument outweigh the weaknesses. Does that make sense? Yes, no? Okay. This is where the subtleties come in, right? If you can acknowledge to the reader that yes, there might be some flaws, however, despite those flaws, it still should be this way, right? You can actually make yourself sound like you know what you're talking about. And in actuality, you would know what you were talking about because you addressed those points that you knew were possibly flawed and explain why, despite the fact that they were flawed, it actually works out in your favor. Ready to go on? Last, last slide coming up. No. Not yet. Okay, now? Yes. All right. So here's some cautions. Um, you need to make sure that the positive points that you want to bring out are actually stronger than the negative or the weaker points that you have. Because otherwise, it'll just ruin your, your, your whole line of reasoning. For example, you said being unemployed is not as horrible as people might think, simply because a person without a job now has, plen has plenty of time to analyze his or her life. That's not such a positive argument for why it's good to be unemployed, right? And yeah, I, I misspelled has, I put Oz. Sorry. I'll fix that. Thanks. Questions? Okay.